Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. This is Evangelist Charles Kruger. Thank you for joining. And this is a broadcast in the time of lockdown. And I'm here in a gym. And I've got my little dog here, Obi. Obi Wan Kenobi. Let me show you the dog. We're waiting for people to join now. Tonight we're going to have a... Hallelujah. Hey, Obi. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I love that dog. Thank God for dogs. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord. I hope you've got your communion elements ready. Riet, bless you. Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have some communion. We're going to pray especially for South Africa and for the United States. Those are the two countries uh, that, that just rose up in my heart. And, and the Lord's putting emphasis on those two countries for me for, for tonight. And uh, also, well, we, we'll pray for this generation. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, that's my winky right. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ach, moeder. <laughs> praise Jesus. So praise the Lord. Wherever you are tuning in from, just let me know where you're tuning in from. It's always interesting to see all the different places that the people are tuning in from. The Lord bless you. We're going to have an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. I was drinking some workouts, a pre-workout. I, I never took it in my life before. <laughs> it must, I've got pins and needles all over my face. And I just took one cap. That's like a quarter of what they recommend to take. I mean, I can't believe it. <laughs> so yeah, I had a good workout. My arms are a little bit lump. But that's a good feeling. So the Lord is good. No hot chocolate now. Maybe a little bit later. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Zetra Bakuseti. I also feel in my heart just to give God thanks for all the things that He's brought us through, you know. There's a song that says, Through It All. I know the Gaithers sing, it's an old song. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to tr yeah, trust in God. I don't know the lyrics, but I was listening to that. And that song just touched me so deeply today. I just felt the presence of Jesus. I just knew that he is faithful and he brought me through so many things. I was in emergency situations in my life. I mean, crisis upon crisis, always against the odds. Like David Hogan says, we're always against the odds, but we always win. <laughs> and that's the truth. We are going against the grain, but we cannot fail. Nothing is impossible with God. And with God in you, what can, what can be impossible? If God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. So whatever this virus is and the economic situation and the social situation and the health situation in countries all over the world and especially in South Africa. Hello, Leone. Hello, bless you. From Cape Town, bless you. And so we've got a situation that we need God's intervention. But God is in control of South Africa. Satan is not in control of South Africa. No government is in control. People think that the government is in control. God is in control because lives are at stake. And God is very jealous over his people. He's predestinated us to be conformed to his image. Hallelujah. There is a calling from eternity past before the foundations of the world that God has knew you. He predestinated you. He has elected you. He has called you. He's formed you. He's breathed his spirit into you so that you can make it. He didn't do that. He doesn't abandon the work of his hands. What he starts, he's finishing. Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Finishing the end from the beginning, knowing that he has the ability and the integrity and the willingness to do what he says he will do. He's not a liar. Hallelujah. We can trust in his word. We can get in under the shadow of his wings. So tonight I just want to thank God. So let's just thank God for the times he's brought us through, for always being faithful, for giving you food to eat, for giving you a place over your, a, a roof over your head, the clothes that you wear. The people in your life, the relationships, the families, even, even, you know, just the ability to breathe and to be healthy. Thank God for his life. Thank God for his son, for the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the cross of Calvary tonight. We thank you, Lord, that your blood flowed like rivers, that you held nothing back, Lord, that you gave your life. Lord, that you surrendered, Lord. You said, though he slay me, yet, yet shall I praise him. Lord, you are the fulfillment of every prophetic word, every commandment, Lord, every psalm, every word has been fulfilled. The flesh, 
The word became flesh and was manifested. We beheld his glory. Lord, we looked upon you. Our eyes have seen you, Lord. Lord, our ears have heard you, Lord. We have seen the almighty God, the invisible God, become a man. And we walked and we saw your glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Lord, you came. And you set us free and you paid the price on Calvary, Lord. And today we want to thank you that South Africa and the United States is in your hand, in your capable hands. You said, who shall pluck you out of my hand? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall pluck us out of the hand of the Father? God is in control. He's on the throne. He's not fighting to be on the throne. He is on the, on the throne. The battle is finished. The battle is won. We have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith in the faithfulness of God. Faith in the goodness of God. And we remind ourselves. And you've got to remind yourself of the times that God has brought you through. Of the times that God has not given up on you. Even if you've disqualified yourself. Even if you have... Left your, left your first love and you've betrayed him and you've gone on in fornication, messing around and doing your own willful acts and your own willful ways. God is saying, I'm not forget, forgetting you. I'm not forsaking you. I'm not leaving you. I am faithful. I have betrothed you. You are mine. I paid for your life with my blood. You are not your own. You are mine. You are bought with the high price of the precious shed blood of the Lamb of God. And so he belongs to you and you belong to him. And you are one and nothing can pluck you out of his hands. And so thank you, Father, for bringing th us through the times that we have messed up and we disqualified ourselves through the times that we don't even we didn't even know where we were going we had no direction no purpose lord but you were there and you gave us the breath in our lungs and every heartbeat was a gift from god so today we want to thank you father for your faithfulness for providing for us for giving us food to eat and bringing us this far every day there was water to drink or something to drink lord to quench our thirst every day there was clothes to wear every day there was people around us we wouldn't have been here if you did not watch over us and watch over your word to perform it lord the very very fact that we are here praying together tonight lord is a testimony of your faithfulness and your goodness and we want to honor you and glorify you and sanctify ourselves lord and because tomorrow you will do wonders amongst us we want to draw near to you lord we want to come closer into the comfort of holiness we want to ask your holy spirit to perfect that which you have begun lord to bring it to pass for you are faithful to Present us blameless on the day before the Father. Today we want to ask you, Lord, that you will complete your work in us, that you, that our lives will be fruitful, that you will prune us and we will bring forth even more fruit, Lord. Lord, that we will not be cast aside into the fire, that we will not be withered, Lord, that we will not be withering branches that's not connected to the vine. And I pray, Father, that you will keep us connected, that you will draw us, that you will win our hearts, that you will woo us, that you will continue to awaken love in Jesus' name, that, Lord, that perfect will, that perfect plan of God for our lives, that you will bring it to pass, that we will see it, the stadiums will be filled. Father, I prophesy in Jesus' name that there will be a mighty revival and a harvest of souls such as the nations of the world and the generations of this world has never seen before, that there will be an army of warriors, a new breed, the wild ones, those who are laid down lovers and barefoot priests of the almighty God that goes in the comfort of holiness, that is comfortable embracing the cross for the joy that is set before them that is comfortable on the cross of Calvary Rebagando as we enforce the death of the old man as we died with Christ Jesus and Lord lest we forget Lord to be raised up into a new life with Christ Jesus to be manifested as sons of God to be a harvest of sons that God has been looking for Lord Lord we are your family we are your very own Lord and you will perfect that which you started Lord we trust you to do it we trust you that the callings will be fulfilled and answered Lord that the prophetic words will come to pass in Jesus name it shall come to pass it shall come to pass at last in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, that you watch over us, that you keep us as the apple of your eye. You hide us under the shadow of your wings. We sit enthroned in the secret place of the Most High and we dwell and abide under the shadow of the Almighty, Lord. Wherever we go, the soles of our feet, Lord, wherever we put the soles of our feet, we take it into possession, Lord. We rule and we reign. We dominate. We subdue the earth, Lord. 
Your enemies are made your footstool. Where we go, Lord, we enforce the finished work of the victory of the cross of Calvary. Lord, we are manifesting sonship. We're manifesting the kingdom. Wherever we go, whatever we say, Lord, we shall decree a thing and it shall be established because, Lord, you have done a good work in us. We remember the benefits of salvation. We remember you, Lord. We remember the worthiness of the blood of Jesus that speaks for us a better word. We remember Remember, Lord, what it cost heaven, that it bankrupted heaven when God himself gave his life for those that he loves unconditionally. We receive your unconditional love, your unmerited favor, Lord. We speak grace, grace to every mountain. It's not by power. It's not by might. It is by my spirit, say the Lord. So today we come and we cast our lives upon you, our future, our past, our present, Lord, our spirit, soul, and body. Lord, the work of our hands and our properties and our possessions. Lord, everything that is ours or everything that we will ever do and accomplish everything that we are lord everything that we will ever have it all belongs to you lord it is yours it is not ours we are not our own we belong to your body is the temple of the holy spirit today we release rivers of living water into the dry and weary land in south africa and in the united states lord i pray father in the spirit of faith and agreement that there will be a surge of wisdom, godly wisdom, godly intervention, godly involvement, divine strategies, insight, discernment and understanding. Lord, that there be knowledge. Lord, that there be vision in the name of Jesus, the spirit of wisdom, the revelation, so that the eyes of the understanding of all the leaders and the church leaders and the governmental leaders, Lord, that there will be integrity and that their eyes of the understanding will be enlightened, that they will understand. Father, for your word says you fornicate for a lack of understanding and that these governments, Lord, will stop their corruption and their fornication and their idolatry, that these governments will be brought to their knees and they will call the name of the Lord Jesus and they will be saved and they will stand up in character and godly character in the fruit of the spirit and they will call, they will stand up in integrity, Lord, leading the people, Lord, in Jesus' name, let your spirit come upon them, Lord, for your righteous sake. In Jesus' name. For your name's sake, Lord. Lord, we call upon you and we ask you to save our nations. And I pray, Father, that there will be divine wisdom. That there will be strategy that these plans of Satan to cast the world into absolute, total and utter chaos, Lord, will not come to pass. We send confusion to the enemy's camp in the name of Jesus. We release the angelic hosts of heaven, the archangels, Michael and Gabriel. We release the heavenly hosts of heaven to encamp round about your church and round about our nations, the very nation of South Africa, Lord, the continent of Africa and Europe, Lord, Lord, Australia and Asia, Rebagando Robo Secret, the Americas, South America, Lord, North America, Canada, Rebagando Robo City, the islands, oh Lord, Lord, let there be peace. Let there be instruction from heaven. Let the church rise up. Let the church and the godly men say something and open up their mouths. Let them speak and let the lion of Judah roar through us. In the name of Jesus, let the Christ man arise. And let there be a rising up of the fiery flood of the Holy Spirit to raise up a standard against the enemy in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that now there will be an anointing that destroys the yoke. Lord, that there will be insight and discernment and a prophetic discernment. That the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened. That we will see that we will hear your secrets that we will hear the heartbeat of God that we will have eyes to see your word declares that you will guide us with your eyes and I pray father now that we will see this situation in this generation through the perspective of the eyes of almighty God that we will see it from your perspective that we will know your opinion that we will know your heart's desires that we will know the secret things that you have planned God will do nothing unless he reveals it to his servants the prophets and I pray father that now you will speak you will open our ears that the church will hear that the church will know and understand that there will be insight lord that there will be an open eyes an opening of our eyes an opening of our hearts to receive the things of the spirit to hear the instruction of the lord to know your will to know your ways like moses knew your ways if we find favor in your sight that we might know thee in the name of jesus let us know you in the fellowship of your resurrection and your sufferings lord let us know you let us come down lord let us humble us lord bring us to the point where we are rooted and grounded in love that we will get over ourselves 
ourselves and our selfish motives and our own intellects and our own plans and our own things and our own empires that we've been building. We've been trying to raise up our own kingdoms. Forgive us for the times that the churches has built businesses, Lord, and incorporations and institutions and organizations, but we have failed to be led by the Spirit of God. There was so much red tape that God could not move in the midst of His church. And I pray, Father, that now there will be a spontaneity, Lord, an impulsiveness, Lord, an automatic flow of the Spirit of God, where those who are led by the Spirit, they shall be the sons of God, that there will be a manifestation in the name of Jesus. In South Africa and the churches all over the world, all over this generation, that men of God will come and submit their congregations and their churches and their properties and their possessions to the perfect will of God, to the leadership and to be under the control of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we rebuke every Jezebel, every intimidating spirit, every manipulative spirit that has been trying to control your church, every high thing that would exalt itself above the knowledge of God and every vain imagination. We cast it out, we cast it aside, we trample it underfoot, every devil, devil, every demon, every scorpion, every adder, every dragon, every lion, we trample it underfoot, we subdue it underneath the feet of Jesus, we subdue this coronavirus underneath the feet of Jesus. Lord, even this economic attack that's coming against the world, Lord, this famine that is taking the nations of the world and shaking the ungodly and shaking the kingdoms. Lord, do not let your church be shaken. Do not forget your mercy. In your wrath, you remember mercy. Lord, there are godly people, there's Christians, their finances are in an absolute uh, threat, Lord. There's, there's come a threat upon people's livelihoods and it's not just sinners it's church people it is christian people it's believers it is your children those who have you have given your life for lord don't let their finances be touched don't let it be shaken lord don't let their businesses close lord show when there is one door that closes open another door and show them the way when the brook rise up. Send them to the right people that will provide, that will open up doors, connect your church. Let there be unity in your church. Father forgive us for the times where we have done our own stubborn things, our own stubborn ways we've walked in Lord and we have not, we have failed to walk together in unity and brotherly kindness and brotherly love. We have failed to walk together in this love of God, the same love that you have loved the Lord Jesus with Father. That same love he has loved us with and we must love the people as he has loved us. So Father, I ask you Father, that there will be an awakening of love. Lord, in the hearts of people, awaken love. Because the time pleases in Jesus' name. Let love do the heavy lifting. Let love be awoken, Lord. Get us love sick. Get us on fire for God. Put our hearts on fire so that we will be drawn Erbando to the secret place to fellowship with God, with fellowship with the Holy Spirit. As we remind ourselves of the time that you have taken us, Lord, you have plucked our feet from the deep miry clay and you've set our feet on solid ground. As we remind ourselves of the times you never fail as we Every person that we ever trusted, Lord, we could not depend on the arm of the flesh. Some trusted in chariots, some trusted in horses, but we trusted in you and you delivered us every time. You never fail to deliver us. You always come through. You are, is a start market. We can, what's going to start market be, Lord? We can depend on you. You are dependable, Lord. And I thank you that you are so honorable that you never change, Lord, and that you never hold grudges and you never remember our sins, Lord. We confess our sins, Lord. We for, forgive us of our iniquities and, and, and uncleanliness. Clean us from all uncleanliness. Just wash us continually. Wash us under the fountain of your blood, Lord. Zadra bakorobose. Let the blood flow like rivers, continually cleansing us, consistently cleansing us. Lord, not just yesterday, not just today, not just but all the time, continual eternal forgiveness, mercy upon mercy, grace upon grace, glory upon glory, compassion upon compassion, waves upon waves, precept upon precept, line upon line, remando, let there be a continual consistent washing. Lord, brakate, even of the washing of the water of the word. Lord, rebakata alamando. Lord, edify us and cleanse us and bring us to the point where we look like Jesus, where we talk like Jesus, where we think like Jesus, Lord. 
Where we walk like him, where we walk like him in Jesus' name. Lord, draw us nearer. Show us the comforter. Show us Jesus. Magnify Jesus. Reveal Jesus. Reveal the word in flesh form. Reveal the person of the word. Show us a clear understanding and a revelation of Jesus. Show us your love and make us like you, Lord. Lord, let there be an inner working of the Holy Spirit. And everybody listening right now, and even generation and churches in the United States and also in South Africa, Father and all also all over this generation lord that there will be a there will be revival nations where nations will be revived and they will get the, the rest on fire there's been so many prophecies about south africa and about the united states about how the revival will hit how the revival will spread to the different continents of the world there's something about the united states and south africa where there is a remnant of people that's on fire for god also australia but many countries they are closing their doors there's many countries that even in africa that they are on fire there's a moving of the spirit there's a moving of the spirit in every country and in the church in every country in the world but I've specifically felt that South Africa has come under the crosshairs of the demonic world. And the, in the, we are in the crosshairs and people are looting people. If you just look at the news and there's things that they don't even show you. And there's just incompetence and there's just corruption and things going on that people don't know what to do. Nothing is in place and, they, and they're playing, they're stalling, they're stalling. And, and it's just like. Father, there's been promises, there's these prophetic words that's gone over South Africa that the fire will start in Cape Town and will move up and it will cover the continent of Africa. You spoke to your servant, Reinhard Bonke, that you saw, he saw a blood-washed Africa, Father. Lord, and Satan wants to buy Africa. Lord, the Chinese want to buy Africa. Communism want to rule Africa and take advantage of the people here. But you will not let it, Lord. Lord, men of God will rise up and they will not touch what is being dedicated unto you. They will not touch it. Their hands will wither up and curl up behind their backs, but they will not touch your anointed and they will do your prophets no harm. Not in this nation, not in this, not in this continent of Africa and not in the United States. In Jesus' name, Satan wants to buy it. Satan wants to rule. Satan wants to cast out and bring persecution upon the church. We're not scared of persecution. But they're not going to die without Jesus. We will preach the gospel. We will not be limited. The gospel will not be silenced. The voice of the preacher will not be silenced. Satan has done it through complacency and compromise and seek a sainted sensitive shallow christianity that's been just playing games and entertaining the people and putting on a show but there is a deepening there is a depth in the christ in the church of jesus christ that people are going to call upon the name of the lord they're going to come under the shadow of the wings and their hearts are going to be ignited with the love of god the flame of their first life is going to be fanned again as the spirit of god breathes life upon the dead dry bones of the church there is going to be a revival of love and there's going to be a revival of fire fire is an all-consuming love is an all-consuming fire and God is an all-consuming fire and God is love and there is a most vehement flame and many waters cannot be able to quench it it shall surely prevail it is contagious and it will spread like wildfire across the nations of the world this generation will be saved the church will arise they will arise and put on a terrible strength they will arise and be clothed with the spirit of Christ they will put on the garments of praise and the robes of righteousness they will be anointed with the oil of joy they will walk and they will they will not fail they will be unstoppable and unshakable and wherever they go they will take possession of the land and occupy until he comes there is a restitution of all things and the church will fulfill its mandate and the great commission shall be answered and fulfilled in the name of the lord there will be a mandate a, a, a remnant that will rise up in the name of jesus and it is happening as we speak when the pressure comes in from the world satan don't know what he's done he has awoken a sleeping giant but arise away Wake, O daughter of Zion, shake the dust off of your feet and rise up and dance again in the name of Jesus. Reba Godolo Robote, let there be a breath of life, let there be a breath of life of the Spirit of God 
of the Zuach, what? Zoe life and the Ruach of God, the breath of God, the life giving from the four corners of the earth in the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit come. Let the Spirit of God quicken. Let the Spirit of God quicken our mortal flesh. Let our youth be renewed like that of an eagle. Let there be a revival and a restoration. Let the years that's been stolen be restored in the name of Jesus. God is reviving the work of His hands in the midst of the years. He remembers us. He remembers His promises and His promises are true. He is faithful to complete it. He is faithful to watch over His word, to perform it and He will not let you go. He will start on an individual level. He will revive you. He will revive your prayer life. He, re he revives your love for your family and your children and your spouse. He will revive your household. Then He will revive your street. Then He will revive your city. Then He will revive your province and your state. And then He will revive your nation. And there will be a generation in your nation that will be saved and washed in the blood of Jesus and God will cause it to spread and the nations of the world will be turned to jealousy and their eyes will open up and say truly the Lord has blessed you and the Lord is with you and the Lord is for you and how can I know Jesus and we will tell them and we will not be silenced and our voice will not be silenced nothing no suffocating python demonic spirit of divination will stop Quiet and stifle and stifle our tongues in the name of Jesus. It will not silence the church. My father, let your voice, let the voice of the roar of the lion of Judah roar through your church, roar through every denomination. Let there be even in the Catholic church a mighty move of the Spirit of God where they will be baptized and speak in other tongues. Let there be a spiritual Pentecost, Lord, that will be poured out upon all flesh and start in your church. Let there be... Lord, that the doctrines of devils fall down. Lord, that the people will rise up and take their mandate and take their privilege, Lord, to subdue the works of the darkness, to subdue the works of the flesh underneath the feet of Jesus. We've got work to do. Stop running around and saying, Lord, one day in the sweet by and by, and oh Lord, just come and take me, just come and rescue the church. We not need rescue. We need to preach the gospel. We need to preach. We have been rescued. We don't have to be raptured. We need to preach. We need to get the nation saved. We need all hands on deck. You're not getting out of this. In Jesus name, Father, I pray. Do not take the church out of the world. But keep them in the world. In the name of Jesus. So that they can preach the gospel. Thank you, Father. Let them rise up in maturity. And stop running around like little babies with nappies. Lord, that needs changing. It's got all kinds of issues and they want to get out and they want to be mamad and papad for the rest of eternity. No, it's time to rise up in maturity as sons of the Almighty God. I thank you, Father, that it starts with us. Start with me, Lord. Start with us, Lord. Let us rise up from the, from the, the, the soft, comfortable beds. And Lord, I thank you for your comfort. But you're anointing us and you're healing us for a reason, for a specific reason. Hallelujah. And we're going to do it. We're going to run. We're not going to fail. We're not going to falter. We're not going to give up. We're not going to quit. We're not going to cower in the corner. We're not going to hide with our tail between our legs like a dog. No, we will rise up and we, make a, we will say what the Lord says. We will make His voice be heard in the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. His voice will be heard and will come from your mouth. It will come through your lips. It will come through your tongue. It will come through your voice in the name of Jesus. Let there be an anointing. Let there be an equipping. Let there be an endowment of power from on high by the Holy Spirit upon the church in Jesus' name, Lord. Rise up. Raise us up. Men and women of God such as the world has never seen before. The likes of which the world and the generations of the earth has never ever seen before. Let there be a generation Lord, start with the millennials and Generation Z. Start with the baby boom. This whole generation, let there be a synergy of the ages and let there be an agreement and an alignment, Lord, so that we can agree as one. So the doctrines of devils will be taken out in the name of Jesus and that we will speak the kingdom. We will preach the truth of the finished work of the cross of Calvary. Lord, your vision, the people perish because of a lack of knowledge and a lack of vision. Anoint our vision. Give us eyes to see. Wherever Satan has given us wrong doc doctrines of devils, where he has intimidated us and made us believe wrong doctrines, Father, we will not keep quiet anymore. We'll start preaching the gospel. We've got work to do. We've got things to do. There's people, there's, there's people to get saved. 
People need to get healed. People need to get delivered. They need to be, an, a, the devils need to be cast out. The dead needs to be raised. The blind need to see. The deaf ears need to open up. Jesus is not coming for a pathetic, weakling, defeated church. He's coming for a triumphant church. He's not coming for, he's coming for those who overcome. To those who overcome. He, he, he has made you more than an overcomer through him. Him through his life and the same spirit that rose, raised, up, raised him from the dead is dwelling inside of you. Hallelujah. And so you are forced to be reckoned with. You don't know who you are. I'm telling you there is the great almighty God that is resident and abiding and dwelling on the inside of you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But he's waiting for you to rise up and know who your God is and stand up and preach the gospel and proclaim the word and take authority in the spirit. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood. It is against pr princes of the powers of the air and high places and wicked places and all, all that stuff. We've got authority over them by the name that has been given unto us. The name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord he is not a carpenter in Galilee anymore he is the son of God he is the king of kings he is the lord of lords he has been crowned all power in heaven and on earth and on earth and on earth and on earth has been given unto him therefore go and preach the gospel hallelujah praise Jesus we thank you, Father, that this is a day of great turnaround. This is a day where the children of God will rise to the occasion and they will meet. And Satan thought he's got us cornered and he's putting the pressure on. We're going to give up. We're going to run away. And we're going to cower. But we will not be intimidated anymore. We will not be manipulated. We will not be controlled by this world or the things of this world or the demons and princes of the powers of the air. But we are free indeed. For whom the sun sets free is therefore free indeed. We will rise up in the name of Jesus. And we will speak the word of God. And we will live and not die in the name of Jesus. We will see and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And it shall be well with us. We will be happy and we will take possession of the land. We will reap where we haven't sown. We'll eat of vineyards we didn't plant. We will live in houses we didn't build. There will be a mighty transfer of wealth. We will take it over because it's been promised unto us and we are the rightful heirs, co-heirs with Christ Jesus. The children of the devil, the children of disobedience will not inherit. We now cast out the bondwoman in the name of Jesus because they will not inherit with the child of promise. We say in the name of Jesus, we claim our inheritance. We claim it for South Africa. We claim it for the United States. We claim it for this generation, for your church, for the children of God, for those who called according to your purpose. We claim our inheritance in Jesus name lord your holy spirit is there and you are ministering to us and you are teaching us what things we have freely received of the father and so tonight we receive what things we have freely received of the father we remind you of the benefits of salvation you forgive our transgressions and you heal our diseases you redeem our lives from destruction you crown our lives with loving kindness and tender mercies you satisfy our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like that of an eagle you are faithful you are kind you are generous lord you are compassionate you show compassion on whom you will show compassion lord who is like unto you there is no like no one like you you are the living god Lord, you are the one we pray to, who we worship and adore. You're the one who saved our lives. You're the redeemer of the earth. You paid the price, not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And Lord, those who call upon your name shall be saved. And I thank you, Father, that you are a doer of your word. Lord, that you're not a man that you should lie. Reba Kata, we base our prayer and, Lord, our faith upon the integrity of your word and the authority of the shed blood of the Lamb of God. Your blood speaks a better word. Your blood speaks. We apply the blood of Jesus over our nations, over our governments, over our provinces, over our healthcare workers. Lord, over the economy, over the small businesses and the entrepreneurs and those who have followed their career paths, Lord. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over economies in the world. Lord, the people that's claiming our unemployment funds and 
South Africa is just not paying it. And they just said, sorry, they, we're not gonna, we can't handle it. Rebagato lo roboshe. So we speak peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, we release the UIF funds in South Africa for the people that need it. They will not be starving in, they will not be starving of hunger. There will be no corruption. The people in government will serve the people of this nation in Jesus' name. They're not going to lock people up like animals anymore. This is not Nazi Germany. <laughs> Rabba enduring. This is South Africa. This is a free democracy. Even in, in the United States, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over the basic human rights. We've got a right to live. And people are dying. Lord, they're dying. They're being shot. They're being handled with absolute. But I thank you, Father. They will not die. They, we plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. We have a right to dignity. We have a right not to be tortured, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, this nation. Lord, everybody that's struggling, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over their finance. I pray that you will make a way. We look to you. You are our source. We don't look to the, the people that we work to for. Lord, you said the birds of the air. They don't store in barns. They don't gather. They don't have farms and barns and stuff. But our Heavenly Father looks after them. And so everybody will be at peace. Lord, and I pray that faith and hope will rise up in the people in South Africa and also in the United States and this generation. Lord, that people will not take matters into their own hands. That there will not be a social upheaval. Lord, that there will not be violence in the streets. That there will not be civil wars. That there will not be... Uh, fighting and breaking and vandalism, Lord, and looting. We plead the blood of Jesus over this generation. I thank you, Lord, of South Africans and the United States as well. We cancel it, Lord. We send out angels and let there be a lifting, Lord, of, of these, this martial law thing that they're putting in place, Father. Let there be a lifting. Let the people cooperate. Let there be a lifting in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that people will have insight, that Satan will not manipulate the people through panic and fear, that the emotions, we plead the blood of Jesus over the emotions of the people of South Africa and the United States, especially, that's what the two countries that God laid upon my heart. Because South Africa, the way South Africa goes, Africa goes. And the United States is basically uh, the leading country you know, and as it goes there, it's going to go all over the world. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will protect lives, the lives of the people, the elderly, those with critical conditions and, and, and underlying health problems, Lord, that you will keep your hand upon them, that the loss of life will be kept to a minimum in Jesus' name, Father, that there will be a healing of our nations because your blood not only flowed for Christians, your blood flowed for the heathen as well, for every single person that has been born. Your blood speaks for them and they are healed through your stripes, whether they believe in you or not. They are healed through your stripes, Lord, and they can have it. So we release healing to the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. You know, I've been watching Benny Hinn and many of these healing evangelists and so on, and then they preach in India and they preach in Sri Lanka, Marilyn Hickey. She goes and preaches to like a million Muslims in Pakistan. And they get healed. They don't even believe. They're not even saved. But they get healed. God heals them. Heidi Baker goes into Muslim villages in the northern part of Mozambique. Where is it? Tempe or what? And she takes the orphan children. And the orphans go and lay their hands upon the blind Muslims and the imams. And they get healed. And the deaf hear. And that, that's how the whole village gets saved. The blood of Jesus flowed, not only for Christians, for everybody, for the whole world. And they can get healed. It's a physical healing. But they can also get saved. But they've got to call upon the name of the Lord to get saved. It's a personal thing. You've got to call. Nobody can, you can't get saved without you wanting it or desiring it or asking for it. It's just the way God set it up. Hallelujah. And so I saw also the, these documentaries that <clears throat> you, you realize that China was a very poor country. And then what happened is, because of the cheap labor, uh, manuf manufacturing, as manufacturing demands increased all over the world, it all went to China. Now, uh, the past few decades, China has just exploded. The economy has just exploded, but to the point where it's now so expensive that even the workers 
the 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 minimum pay is like I think twenty eight dollars for the workers uh, per day, where it used to be like three or four dollars or five dollars. Now they've shifted in the last few years, five, six, seven years, they've shifted a lot of the the manufacturing to Vietnam because the labor was, was cheaper. But now they're also going up and their labor is on cheap. So Africa is basically a place where we, you know, so so China is buying Africa. So they, they are investing a lot in Africa, but the United States also. A lot like Facebook and Amazon just built a hundred million dollar data plant in Cape Town. Or they're busy building it this year. They're supposed to build it this year. Uh, Facebook has been laying data cables. Uh, Google has been investing in infrastructure in all over Africa. China has been building railways and been building highways and putting infrastructure in place. So, so Africa is not for sale in Jesus' name. But thank God for all the education. They've been building schools. They've been putting internet and giving internet access to a lot of people in Africa. Um, there's running water. This infrastructure is busy. So it's on the one hand, it's very good. But it's not... I pray that there will not be a communist spirit that takes over Africa because they want to kick out the gospel. They don't want the gospel preached. That's communism and socialism and all that kind of stuff. All right. <clears throat> it's just... Uh, Looking at history, that's the way that it worked. We don't need a democracy or a social or a communist. We need a theocracy. That is a, a government that's led by God and the principles of God, like the United States and South Africa had in the beginning as, well, as they were founded. They looked to God. They, 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 they wanted a country where they could serve God freely, where they could have church, where they, wasn't, they weren't um, run by the government. And this is what happened in Europe and a lot of these other places where the government tries to control the church and say, because the church, they know if they can control the church, they control the people. And God will not be controlled. His spirit will not. And that's the spirit even behind denominations and organized religion and institutionalized religion. They want to control the people and they want to keep them dependent upon them so that they can manipulate them. And what, they don't want them to rise up in maturity. They don't want them to rise up and participate and start their ministries and be launched into ministry. They're keeping them babies. They're keeping them dependent upon them. And people, we've got to, we've, we've got to, there's a revolution, a reformation, basically. That's busy taking place and God is shaking stuff and God is doing it. Not the people. The people are being liberated by God himself. And these institutionalized, these systems, these things that's keeping the spirit of God under control, that wants to manipulate and control the Holy Spirit and usurp the anointing. They are merchandising the anointing and selling it for profit. They have the anointing, they receive the anointing, and then they are boosting all the miracles on Facebook and all the testimonies and look how big I am and look how wonderful God is and how he's using me and look at my miracles, look at my anointing. It's not your anointing. It's the grace of God upon your life. Jesus gets the glory, right? But now they're using this to promote their ministries and they're increasing their salaries and they're buying bigger houses and, they, and they, they're not using the money to go and do evangelism. They're sitting with millions and millions of dollars in their bank accounts and now they're sitting with it and they're buying property. I, saw, I was amazed. It breaks my heart and it breaks the Lord Jesus' heart. I'm telling you, you're grieving the Spirit of God. The more people are sowing into your church and your ministry, the more properties you buy and you are using an excuse of investing into properties and stocks and bonds. Where in your world have you taken the money of the kingdom and you've invested it into stocks and you've invested it into properties and now you're renting out the properties and the money that's coming in, you're using again to buy more properties. Where will it end? When will you get some people saved? With that money. When will you minister to the people? You're growing a ministry and it's like a business. So that you can secure your financial future. 
as a pastor of that church. You are a businessman, but you're taking kingdom finances. You're not ministering to the people. You're using it as an excuse. And you've surrounded yourself with a board of directors and a, and a church board that see eye to eye. And they exactly, and they support you into what you're doing. But God is going to break you to pieces. Your, your properties are not going to be worth anything. He's going to take all of that and give it to people who is on fire for God that wants to get the souls saved. You have been heaping up and gathering up in barns. But God says your barn is about to burn down. And there will be nothing. Not one stone will be left upon another. It's like the days where Jesus prophesied the destruction of the temple. Tear down this temple and in three days I will raise it up again. I prophesy to you that the three days is at hand. And there is a resurrection. A resurrection from the dead. That the church of Jesus Christ will rise up in manifested sonship. And they will rise up and it will draw all the finances away from the wicked in Jesus' name. You're a sheep. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing. You started off well in your ministry, but now you're keeping yourself. You think you've outsmarted God and your money is safe and you stole the money of the kingdom and you built a business. You've built an empire and you've got little humanitarian works. You are not a ministry. You are a, a, a charity organization, but you are going under the guise of a ministry and people are fooled and they are fooled into sowing their money and their tithes and everything into your ministry ministry, so that you can build your ministry and build and buy more houses and buy more properties and do that. You are using your church to buy, you to invest, you taking that money and you're investing it. In the world. Now the world is shaken. But God is going to require of you. He said to the servants. This is by the spirit of the Lord I'm saying this. I don't want to go here. I don't know anything about this. This is what the Lord is saying. He said there is a certain man. A master. That gave the one person. He gave one talent. The other person gave uh, two talents. And the other person five talents. And he went on a long journey. He came back and he asked the guy with the five talents, what have you done? And he says, well, I've doubled it. He has 10, he has 10 talents. You used it. Here, here comes the, the other person with the two talents. And he's doubled it and he's at four talents. Here comes the one with the one and he buried it. So he didn't spend it. He didn't take risks. He didn't use it. He buried it. All right. And God is requiring now of the church. He's coming back. He said, what have you done with the finances? And he's not asking you how many properties you've got. That's not the talents. He's given you an anointing and you merchandised it. And now you've got a big empire of properties, but you have not won souls. You've not ministered to the people. You've started humanitarian little feeding schemes and hands of hope and all kinds of stuff. And you are, you're doing it on the surface. But he says, even if you give your body to be burned, but you don't have love, it profits you nothing. It profits the kingdom nothing. If you give people food, you clothe them, you give them houses, you, you, you're doing it and you're taking all the pictures, make no mistake, you're making it public. Everybody knows what you're doing for the poor. And he says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Or your right hand with your left hand is doing. He says, keep it in secret and God who sees in secret will reward you in the open. But you've made it very public what you're doing with your money. And this is a rebuke of the Lord. And he says, come back to your first love. Through it all, don't you remember the times that I've gotten you through some stuff? Don't you know where I got you out of? Don't you remember that you were on the rocks where there was no place they were between a rock and a hard place? And God pulled you from the deep mighty clay and he put you on solid ground. And you have done what, is, what, you, what seemed right to you in the natural. But you've not, you've not remembered it is my talents that I gave you. It's not properties and money. I've invested in my spirit and my anointing in your life to get a harvest of souls. Not a harvest of houses. I own the property. I won't ask you for houses. I own it all. I, the gold is mine. The silver is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. The earth and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. I don't need to ask you for money. I'm not going to ask you if I'm hungry for food. Now you've got a lot of properties and you've got a big empire. But your church 
And it's full of false converts. Those people are sitting there, they seek a sensitive and they have no, they have not, their consciences are seared and they are sitting in a church where they can do whatever they want to and they're not brought under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And the moment somebody stands up to prophesy, you make them quiet. If the moment that somebody prays for the sick, you stop them because you don't want to offend the sick if they don't. By some chance, they're not healed. Now you don't want to offend the sick people if they're not going to get healed. So you stop praying for the sick. And God said, you shall lay your hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover. You don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit even anymore. And you don't allow it in the preaching and the praying in the Spirit. You don't allow it in your church anymore. God is speaking to somebody specifically and somebody that is... In such a church. And God is saying to you. If you don't change. It's not business as usual. This is a different time. This is a diff this is harvest time. This is not business as usual. You know, the money is coming. But what you're going to do with this money. Has got everything to do. If there's going to be a consistent flow. If there's going to be a consistent. Because I am rerouting and redirecting. The supply lines to different. I'm putting emphasis on different ministries. There's coming a shifting. There's coming a. A, a redirecting, a resetting, there's coming a rebooting, a reviving, a renewing, a refreshing. There's a re, uh, there's blueprints, divine blueprints from heaven that is being released. Hear ye the word of the Lord and see what you're going to do with that finances in the name of Jesus and start winning souls. My heart is for people. My heart is not, you're not going to come and say to me, says the Lord, that you've got 100 properties and uh, so much cars and so many acorns and such comfortable seats uh, but i'm going to ask you whose lives have you impacted where's the sinners that got saved or did you just build a nice little seeker sensitive friendly church where you stole the sheep from other ministries you haven't even won one soul to Jesus. Well, you, you think you've got a big successful ministry, but you, all you did is draw all the lukewarm Christians and the, the compromising Christians from other churches that's, that's full of rebellion, that, that wants to wear nappies and they are immature and they want to remain that and they want to remain dependent upon their pastor. And now they're sitting in your church for 20 years and not one of them can drive out a devil. Not one of them prays in tongues or can interpret tongues. Not one of them is prophesying. They're not laying hands on one another. And now they're complaining. And Is that the church? Is that what Jesus died for? No, he died for sinners to get saved. The dying, he, he didn't die so that you can be, you've got marketing degrees. You've got a business degree just to handle your church, just to run your ministry. You need a marketing degree. You need a, a graphics designing. You need a, human resources. You need um, public relations. Uh, just to be, remain politically correct, you've, you've built a thing that there's a way that seems right unto a man, but is the spirit of the Lord there? Is, when somebody wants to win souls, are there people winning souls or is there too much red tape? Can you use the equipment? Can you use the properties? Are you w using it to win souls? The, the properties and the things that God has given you, it's not a business. And you keep on investing. You are franchising the church. And now what you're doing, you are opening up other churches and every other branch must pay tithes to you. And you are having a monopoly. This is not right. This is, there's something wrong with that. Okay, Fine. That's the structures. That's the stuff. That's the human stuff. But then allow the Holy Spirit to move in your church. Then allow people to get see, the sick to be prayed for. Allow people to pray in tongues. Allow people to be moved. Equip the body. Raise them up. Send them out. But you're keeping them in volunteer mode for 20 years. I mean, they've been serving you for 20 years, but you've not released them yet to go and start their own ministry. They've got to start a ministry that is faithful to you, and you're keeping them babies. You're keeping them dependent on you. You are dictating to them what they must preach, and how they must preach, and where they must preach, and how much they must get paid, and so you are raising up hirelings. You're not a spiritual father. You're a dictator. You, you, you are, you're a general. You want soldiers and puppets and robots, and they better be in line, otherwise you fire them. That's not the heart of God. 
You, whatever you've pl built and planted, is, there's, there's something that's got to change. And this goes for governments as well. There's a thing that they want to control, and this is exactly what that spirit of communism and antichrist. That's a spirit that's been with us since... That's the spirit that crucified Jesus. But that thing's been defeated. Now we want to give the world over to Antichrist. Excuse me? So that everybody can go to hell with, with Satan. And him drag everybody to hell. He says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And so we're going to go in beyond the gates. And we're going to take the sinners. We're going to bring them to Jesus, man. Let's preach Jesus. Let's preach salvation. You've got so many end time doctrines. Every year you've got to change your doctrine. And you've got to change your newspaper article clips. And your little snip out clips and your things. And, and you're sitting and you are, you're keeping yourself busy with Satan's plans. You are excellent at what is evil. And innocent of what is good. But he says, don't be be innocent of evil and excellent at what is good. So you're studying Satan's plans. You're studying the Antichrist and what the chip is and the mark of the beast. And you know more about the mark of the beast and the chips and the things under the sun than you know about the kingdom of God. That's why your church, that's why you're sitting and you're powerless and things aren't happening and you want to plant church. You want to plant trees. You take kingdom money and you want to plant trees in another country that's, that's a godless country. They don't, they're persecuting churches there. But you want to go plant trees there with the money that people sow that's supposed to go for soul winning because you can't take trees with you when you die, or if you die. You can't take trees. Trees, he says, it, it makes an analogy. He, he, he's, God didn't give his life for trees. He gave his life for human beings. We are like trees. Funny that he said we are like trees. But people want to plant trees with kingdom money. And you think you're doing God a favor. You're now helping Jesus to, to make his, his country beautiful. No, help. no, 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 no. No, win souls. That's more precious than the trees. He can plant trees. God can breathe out trees. He, can, he made trees. He made everything. He spoke it into existence. He upholds all things by the power of his word. Don't help him plant trees. Help him win souls in Jesus' name. Rebagado robo saca telemende. There's coming a change. There's coming a shift. God is bringing divine order. Not systematic, institutionalized, organized order. That you've got, and you're not going to lay, apostle, you're not going to lay the foundations again. Stop laying foundations. The 12 apostles are the foundations of the new Jerusalem, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have come to the city of our God. He is our God. He inhabits us. He is our light. By day, the sun shall not scorch us, the moon by night. We are fine, we are saved, we are, and our gates shall be open continually as the men shall bring in the forces of the nations. It's talking about the time such as this. For this time, it's not in heaven. There are no other nations. There's no heathen nations in heaven. This is the time. The kingdom of God is here now. So this, this is the foundation of the apostles, the 12 apostles that God himself chose out. You're not one of the 12 you stop trying to lay foundations. Let's get the job done. You want to bring order. You want to bring correction. And you're coming with a whip. And I don't come with a whip. I don't have a whip. I don't whip people and neither does Jesus. He comes with correction. And if you feel like you are whipped, that's your problem. It's not my problem. I'm not whipping you. I am talking the word. This is the freedom. This is the life. There's a way where we can be led by the Spirit. And we can have inspiration of the Spirit. We can come under the influence of the Spirit. We can come into that place where we have joy, where we have peace, where we're walking in the kingdom. And we have the righteousness of God inside of us. Our lives bearing fruit. We are living from the overflow of the secret place of the presence of God without issues and hangouts. Of course, when you come against God's word and God's order and God's ways and he points out something in your life. It feels like it's like God is God's not whipping you. He says, change, repent, repinnacle. That's come back to the truth of the word. That's what the word is saying. I'm not coming with hellfire and 
brimstone and turn or burn preaching tonight. I'm saying to you, there is a way. Turn back to Jesus because there's a harvest. You can't continue with the way things have been going anymore. You've got to open up the platform. You've got to be a facilitator of the move of the Spirit. You're not a dictator. You're not usurping the limelight. You're not taking the glory. He will not share His glory with another gospel. It's, there is no other gospel. There's only one gospel. There's only one good news. Whatever the other thing that presents itself as a gospel is, that's not the gospel. That is not a gospel at all. It's not good news. It's bondage. It's law. It's works of the flesh. God says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, say the Lord. You've got to be led by the spirit. And if your board does not want to do it, and they don't, and they want to continue with their empire, then get out. Get out. Let them continue with their nonsense. Trust God and go and win souls, man. Go and pray again. Go and get a, seek the face of God so that you can cast out devils and raise them out of the wheelchairs and walk in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Why do you want to continue in a dead, lifeless thing? That's why your wife is so depressed. Because you're stuck in a thing that, that's bringing, dragging the joy and the life. It sucks a vampire ministry. It's sucking the life out of you because it's not the Spirit of God. Everything. It's an instant. It's a business. The, God... You're not the business, you're the kingdom of God. It's kingdom finances. Don't use the money to build buildings. And It's great, get a building, use it. But stop buying your whole city with the kingdom finances. God's not interested in the buildings and the houses and the office park. Get people saved. Get them saved. It's ridiculous how many denominations you realize that the... Let me rather keep quiet about the denominations and how much property they own. It's to be, it's terrible. When the spirit of the Lord leaves, then they start forcing and manipulating the people to give. And then they use that money to build themselves and to secure their financial future. The spirit of Ichabod, it's gone, it's over. They don't even know, they got to get saved themselves. Those people are compromising and they allow every homosexual their homosexuality they allow it they want it in their church no even the preacher can be homosexual now that's not that's not right god says they will not inherit you can't continue with your sin if you've got that sin problem god never made a homosexual never god never made a homosexual okay it's a lie from the pit of hell satan has deceived you you found the false identity. That's not who you are. Let me tell you who you are. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You are created in the image and likeness of God. And He can conform, He can transform you into His image and likeness. You, you are a son of God. You're a daughter of the Almighty God. He's got a plan for your life. Those feelings and those lusts in your life. Those things aren't true. It's false. There is a higher truth. The truth of who you are. Now you've got to get born again. You've got to be washed in the blood of Jesus and those things will fall off of you. Why do you think, it, why do you think they call it being born from above? Born from God. You are His child. Okay? <clears throat> that thing is destroying you. It's not that God is a party pooper and He wants you to stop having fun. And your idea of fun is perverted. It's warped. It's, you're under deception. Your Satan perverts. He takes needs and He takes your wants and desires and things that God has given you and He perverts it and He twists it and He's using that sin, that false comfort, that false, that arm of the flesh that you're praising and worshiping as if that is your God. That's the one who saved you. That's the one that you need because I can't live without you and I can't do without you and I don't want to live without you. Nonsense. Jesus is your savior. He is your husband. He's the one who died for you. He's jealous. He wants you for himself. It's not that person that's going to save you. You can live without them. They are dragging you to hell with them. Stop it. Get out of that relationship in the name of Jesus. That witchcraft school that you attended. Coming into the church and you're sitting and you're trying to, to practice witchcraft and you think you're a white witch. There's no such thing as a white witch. There is only rebellion. There is witchcraft and it's satanic and it is Satan that has been deceiving people. They are walking in witchcraft 
doing spells and hexes and rituals and satanic chants and all that kind of stuff. And they think there's nothing wrong with it. Let me tell you something. There's now a website. Not now, it's an old website. It's been around for years. Um, Christian Witches Association. So there's now basically these witches that practice witchcraft, but they are Christians. And they can continue with their witchcraft. But they, they, they're going into all kinds of... They are tapping into the realm of the satanic, of the demonic. That's where it is. And they think Satan Satan has deceived them to the point that they think they're right. You are a Satanist. You're a Luciferian or a satanic uh, devil worshiper. That, but you, you, it's under a guise. It's under a show of light. It's an angel of light. It comes as, as an angel of light. And you think, but you are deceived. You think you know how the spiritual realm works. You don't have any clue. Satan is just dragging you to hell. Son of the Spirit of God, the conviction of the Holy Spirit comes again upon the Church of Jesus Christ in the United States especially. Now they are legalizing Satan worship. They are worshiping Satan. They're legalizing sat satanic temples. They're building satanic temples in Washington where they worship Satan just over across from the White House. Okay? This is ridiculous, man. That's evil. It's wicked. Can't do that. God, God's not going to stand for that. He, those things has got to come down. In fact, he's already brought them down. They can't exist. They are sinking sand. They are going down. And if you're part of that system and if you're part of these things that do not want anything to do with the Holy Spirit, that's anti-anointing, anti-Christ you are going to fail. You're not going to take over the world. That doctrine is a doctrine of the devil. Satan wants you to think that Antichrist is going to rule this world. No. Jesus rules this world. All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go and preach the good news, the gospel. That's the gospel. He is in authority. He's not giving it over to Satan. Satan loves to make the church think that Antichrist is going to kick Jesus off the throne. And he's now going to rule. No, his kingdom is going down. And the people are going to get saved. Because of the increase of our kingdom, the kingdom of our God, the kingdom of righteousness, the kingdom of heaven, there will be no end, no end, no end, no end, no end. And the kingdom is here now. It's not coming one day in the sweet by and by. It is here. It says the kingdom is, nobody will say, here it is, there it is. The kingdom is within you. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Go and preach and tell them the kingdom is at hand. Lay your hands on the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. So John wants to know, are you the one or should we look for another? Jesus says to them, go and tell John, the blind see, the deaf hear. The, what, you, you remember, he said, go and tell him about the miracles. And if these miracles happen, you know that the kingdom has come. So that's the truth. We are in the kingdom. And you're part of the kingdom. If you're born again, you're in the kingdom, brother. You, you, you're not outside of the kingdom. If you're out of the kingdom, you're not saved. You, if you're born again, you are the city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You are the new Jerusalem. This is adorned as a bride. The foundations are the 12 apostles. They're not physically laying somewhere and now the, the, this UFO city is going to come and fall upon the, the bodies of the 12 apostles. Get real. The foundations was the, the lives, the ministries, and the doctrines, and the foundational, the, 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 the precepts, the principles, the, the preaching of the, the word, the order that was set there by the 12 apostles. Hallelujah. If you have an apostolic, apostolic ministry now, don't, don't go around trying to lay foundations. Go and enforce the foundations that's already laid. That's a true apostle. Otherwise, you're a false apostle. You're false. You, 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 your, your ministry doesn't uh, uh, have any kingdom function whatsoever. Because there's already the foundations are laid. The, that's why you get these guys that start cults. Because they want to relay their foundation and then they are secluded, separating, isolating themselves from society. And they've got, a, they've got a little group of people and they build their own church and their own empire. And they don't work with anybody else. And now they've got these own little 
empire, self-sufficient, and nobody, everybody that comes there is a stranger, and you don't click in, and they don't want you there, and they've got their own little group and their own thing, and they're doing their own thing. And you've got to listen to that guy. That guy is a false apostle because he's trying to relay foundations that's already been laid by the 12 apostles. If you've got an apostolic ministry today, then you are enforcing the finished work. You're not calling for new foundations that's coming one day in the suite. By and by, that apostle's got a false devilish doctrine. He's a, he's a false prophet. Okay? The truth is that it is done. And, and I've got scripture upon scripture upon scripture. One of these... Um, Broadcast that I did, I we went through all the scriptures. I don't know if you can remember that. But I'll write something and I'll probably post it tomorrow. So come back to Loveborn Facebook page and you will see all the scriptures right in the word. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to post the scriptures. You read the scriptures and then you make up your own mind. Whether or not you can believe the word or you want to believe your, your favorite um, doomsday prophet that wants the, the, the devil to take over the world. Um, no, we are going to take over the world. He's coming for a triumphant church in any case. And Jesus is coming. We're not going. We'll meet him in the air. He's not meeting us in the air. Praise the Lord. So here we got something. This curse must be broken. This whole world, it's groaning for the what? For the coming of the Antichrist. No. The world is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. So that this world can be set free. And the curse can be broken. Lord help. And this is rightly discerning the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. So here we take the body. And this is the body. And please get yourself some. Um, I think it's the alarm that went off. I'm sitting in. The gym is actually a biokinetica place, Adelaide McDonald. Anyway, so get yourself some bread. Hallelujah. Now it's time to rise up and to preach the gospel and to tell the truth and to stay thankful and, and thank God for where he's brought you out of and what he's done in your life. And that's time to get a generation saved. And get your ministry active to participate in the harvest because we need all hands on deck. And the finances that you've got, it's not yours, it's God's. You, you know what the churches are doing? They've got these massive, get, get yourself some bread and some wine. I'll give you one minute. The churches get these, um, they start churches, these apostles. They've got a massive church and then they, they have like 10,000 members. They've got a huge facility and they do it for 10 or 15 years. And then what they do is, now they retire. They want to get out of the ministry. So they sell the church to another ministry. So you basically just sell your church, the building, and everything. And then they take the money that they get from that money, from the, the selling of the church. I mean, they sell it as a business. They're not just selling the property. They're selling the whole ministry, the whole church, all the people. They sell it. And they take that money and they go and retire with it. No, that money is not yours. <laughs> That's kingdom money. The people sold it into the kingdom. Now you want to sell it as if it's your business. Well, the government's not going to stop it. They don't understand the church, the things of the kingdom. That money is not yours. When you come to people and you tell them, listen, sow into ministry. And so, by the way, if you want to sow into my ministry, paypal.me forward slash loveborn. And I'll put the banking details of this evangel prophetic evangelism ministry in the comments. And bless you for everybody that's sowing. But they take up offerings and then they take that money and they, they, they take it like a business. And then they sell the ministry and they sell the church and they take the money and they go and retire. And they live off of that money as if it's, you, if it's theirs. That's not your money. When God speaks to people to sow, it's the kingdom's money. You, you must minister. You can live. You can live off of the gospel. But I mean, you can't just take all of it. And now those people in that church that built up that church, that sowed in that church, I think it was Rodney Howard Brown that actually talked about this. This is ridiculous. Now those church members must sow again for another 10, 20 years into the new pastor's ministry. And repay for the building that they paid for, for the kingdom's work. So they're repaying again. So the church, the church is being stolen from. 
so that some guy that calls himself an apostle and thinks that he does he deserves the money because he worked so hard. No, you're a hireling. You're not called. You're you're a false apostle. And then probably the other guy that bought the church from this guy is also going to sell it in 20 years' time and also going to go and recover. So that church is just always sowing for a, and they're paying three, four, five times for a building that they've already paid off years ago. Praise the Lord. Why am I speaking this? Why am I talking about this? Maybe the Lord is talking to somebody. Maybe he's redeeming you. Maybe he's setting you free from some, some, some wolves. Hallelujah. <laughs> <clears throat> Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your body. Lord, we declare that we will receive, we will preach the gospel. And by your will, Lord, we will be manifested as sons. And we will take control and we will take over. We will break curses and we will heal the sick and cast out devils. And we will calm the storms in Jesus' name. Lord, let our lives be manifested sonship. Manifest your word in flesh form. Let Christ be revealed in the flesh of the church. In Jesus' name. Hmm. Glory. Hmm. We're taking communion for you guys that are just joining. This is the blood of the Lord Jesus. Partake of the blood. It washes you clean constantly, not just once, but one, once and for all means it's constant, constant, constant. His blood, wash, blood washes you. You can't be born again, again. So the day you get saved and washed in the blood of Jesus, you are only truly saved if you are saved indeed. I mean, saved. God doesn't change his mind if, whether or not you are saved or not, saved or not. Now, when you get saved, it's an event. Something happens. Otherwise, you're not saved. Otherwise, you think you're saved. You're a false convert. You've got to get saved. Okay? That doesn't mean that you're never going to do sins again. But there is a different nature inside of you. And you don't want to do sin anymore. You don't want to doesn't mean you're not weak and you don't fall, but it's, it's like there's a new nature, a new heart in you. That's how you know you're saved. And you can't, now you're saved and now you do sin and now you forgot to repent of that sin and now God holds a grudge against you and, and you fall off of a cliff or something, a bus hit you and now you're going to hell. But for 20 years you've served the Lord, you've loved the Lord, but you forgot to repent of some curse word that you said. And now you didn't repent, now you can't come in because now God's like schizophrenic and now you're saved and tomorrow you did something and says, now, okay, now, now you're not saved anymore. Now you've got to be born again, again. And then you get born again, again, again. And then again and then again and again. And so they go on and again and again. And, and then they're saved and then they're not saved. No, you've got to have assurance of salvation. Confidence. The blood washes you clean. Past, present, and future sins is paid for already by the blood. you got to receive it. And then you, you are cleansed continually, daily. You are cleansed. You keep on receiving the blood of Jesus, not to save you, but to wash you of uncleanliness. Amen. Because otherwise you, you see it in your conscience and your heart, your nature is different. You've got a different nature. Now your nature is, I want to do the things that please God. And now you fall in sin. But for you to be cleansed, you, you receive the blood of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's flowing through your veins. You can't partake of the blood of Jesus today. And then tomorrow God decides, no, he's not born again anymore. Once you've taken the blood of Jesus and you've done it in faith with thankfulness, receiving it because you're saved. How do you think he's now going to take back your salvation? How people are schizophrenic. And one day like this, tomorrow they're not saved. And then they say, and then they called, and then they start a ministry, and then they start a business, and then they do this, and then they do that. Get grounded and rooted in the love of God. Nothing can pluck you from the hand of God. Your sins are as scarlet, but they are washed white like wool. They, your sins. Some of you need assurance of salvation. You are free, you are saved. 
God's not changing his mind about you. Hallelujah. You saved, you free. You will live eternally with heaven, with in the presence of the Lord forever and ever, whether it's here or in heaven or wherever, but you're gonna you come back. You're gonna be resurrected here in a new glorified body. You're gonna be on this earth for all eternity. Maybe you're gonna fly around. I don't know, who knows? But you're saved. You're gonna know that you're saved. Satan's gonna make you doubt. Are you really saved? What about that sin? What about that problem? What about that weakness? What about so he disqualifies you? And now you believe that. And you now trust your feelings and your reasonings instead of trusting the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the inner witness inside of you and the blood of Jesus, the worthiness of the blood. You don't trust faith. Faith. You are saved through faith, not feelings. Sometimes I don't even feel saved. I feel, I, my feelings feel, I feel like uh, I want to stay in bed all day. You get days like that. But then I realize it's not my feelings, my faith. I am saved. Oh, no. Okay, wait. I'm saved. And suddenly my, my feelings has got to get in line. Praise the Lord. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Please share. And so as you sow, God bless you. What a night. Lord, bless South Africa. Bless the United States. And thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for where you're taking us for revival that's coming in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory and all the praise. We thank you that the victory is ours, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And Lord, there's going to be wisdom released to the people in Parliament, in the state senates and Congress and everywhere, that God will intervene. And Lord, let the economies come back in Jesus' name. Help South Africa, Lord. And if the people need shaking, Father, remember mercy. It's not the shaking, it's not the punishment, it's not the fear and the torment and the terror that gets people saved. It is the love of Jesus, Father. You know that. It is your love. You didn't come to condemn the world. You came to save sinners. We didn't receive a ministry of judgment, of calling down fire upon people, no matter how bad they are. It's love. Love is a fire. And love wins all. Love conquers all. Love believes all. So we release the love of Jesus over South Africa. We release the love of Jesus over the United States, over Australia, UK, over Russia and Asia, over the Middle East, Father, over Europe, all over, in Jesus' name, South America, Canada, Brazil, everywhere, Raba, Kasotele, the islands, I don't know where else. Africa, the whole Africa, Shata, Kabaku, this whole generation, we release love, more love, more grace, more grace. We send it abound, more grace, grace that much more abound. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs, triumphs over judgment. Where there's grace, people change. They get saved with his grace. They don't get saved with his then they get fearful and they become false converts and they try and live a good life in the flesh and they are serving God from here. But when God forgives you and gives you grace and has mercy upon you, we love him because he first loved us. When he forgives you, your heart falls in love with him. That's born again. Now your, your everything changes and you change inside, not outside, in inside. Jesus name. Bless you guys. Thank you. And uh, maybe tomorrow about six we'll go again. Yo, it's been a long, it's been a long broadcast. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you for joining Anita. Riet, you're still here. Riet, bless you. Mariette van der Westhuizen, Elise Reinder, bless you. Eloise van der Merwe, Lisha Stein, Reynolden Gomez, bless you, bless you, bless you. Love you.